So good morning, everybody. My name is Ted Blank, and I am one of the travel advisors here with Travel Leaders Market Square Travel in the Twin Cities. And I'm excited to welcome you to um, what is actually kind of a series of presentations we'll be doing over the next several months focused on river cruising. And so I thought we would start with one of kind of the most popular up and coming river cruise destinations, and that is the Douro River in Portugal. And so I would like to introduce my colleague, Mary Margaret Ruther, who is with Good morning. Ama Waterways. One of Good the- Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Mary Margaret is joining us from near Chicago. And Ama Waterways is one of the premier river cruise companies that cruises the waters of Europe and also um, Africa, Egypt, and Southeast Asia. But today, Mary Margaret and I are gonna take you on a little journey down the Douro River. Uh, we have to excuse our, excuse our Portuguese. Oh, please. Neither of yeah. us passed Portuguese in high school. It was a kind of a rough time, I think, in my life, high school. So didn't, didn't do well in Portuguese. So if we butcher a few names, we'll apologize. But hopefully you'll get the flavor of this um, absolutely stunning region. So welcome, everybody. We're going to go ahead and mute our cameras. And then I'm going to get us started here on Facebook, which will just take a moment. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, and thank you so much, uh, Ted. I appreciate. Okay, all right, I'm gone. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Um, and yes, the Doro, as Ted has said, is actually running a close first uh, between the the Rhine and the Danube. When people ask me what are the most popular destinations on the rivers, I always used to say the Rhine and the Danube. But now I have to preface that and say, it's really, it's getting to be the Doro. And what the background that you see there, besides our beautiful ship, the Amadoro, is uh, port, is Porto. And so let me take you on a journey, all right? And I always start off with, so that you are aware that Ama Waterways is a very financially sound company. We own all these ships, right? Every single one of them we own and they're paid for. In the last 10 ships we put in the water, according, as you can see by Rudy's quote on the left, we paid for in cash. So um, when, you, when Travel Leaders Market Square, Ted and, they, so, and their wonderful associates are working with Ama Waterways, be rest assured that they're working with a very financially sound company. We are family owned and operated. We have been since we were founded in 2002. Rudy Schneider, our, one of our co-founders, our pre president, as well as our architect. He has designed all of our ships. And he's also known as the godfather of river cruising. Christine Karnst, another co-founder and our executive vice president. And the third co-founder was Jimmy Murphy. Fortunately, Jimmy passed away in 2014, but we're very excited and proud to have his son, uh, Gary as one of our co-owners and he's our senior vice president of sales and I talk about these three individuals because they don't sit in a white ivory tower dictating to all of us what to do they are hands-on owners it is not unusual for them to show up on one of our ships unannounced um, and you could be sitting there having breakfast or having a drink in their lounge and they could ask can I sit and visit with you and that's just you know, when you travel with Ama Waterways, we do welcome you into our Ama family. In case you were unaware, we did sail last year on the Ama Christina on the Rhine, uh, but it was to the Austrians, Swiss, and Germans. And what happened was a German tour operator by the name of Ihoi contacted Rudy and Christine and said, I have clients that would like to experience river cruising. Well, we had to meet every single protocol of the Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, Switzerland, Germany, France, because that's, those are the countries that touch the Rhine River. We met them, and yes, face coverings were worn, temperatures were checked, um, social distancing was met, but I think the reason why we had not one case of COVID at all on, from, from July 5th to June, I'm sorry, from July 5th to November 2nd, uh, all those sailings, uh, was because when Rudy has designed our ships, he's designed every single stateroom, hallway, lobby, lounge, dining area with a separate air system 
so you're breathing clean air. Now, if you want to know what the protocols are for the upcoming months, weeks ahead, we have a website that's is kept as up to date as we possibly can, and it's amawaterways.com slash protocols. And no, we are not sailing as yet. We are still waiting for protocols to come in as to when we can start. And we are so anxious. We're ready. So reasons to travel with us versus somebody else. Well, number one, I think it's my crew. They are spectacular. They really do make my job very easy. But it's also our tours. Every time we stop, there is a tour. It's included. Okay. So you may have a choice between a culinary, a, a cooking class, a you know, a wine tasting, um, a bike tour, a hiking excursion, um, or even three different, you know, walking tours. Now, with Portugal, we do not have any bicycles on, the, on those two ships that we have in Portugal, but we do offer many hiking excursions if you want to keep active, okay? Then, after you've selected what you would like to your shore excursion, you then you have to choose between you want to be part of my gentle walkers who walk just a little slower, my regular walkers, or what I like to call my power walkers. You know, they just want to get through the tour and they either want to go shop or they want to do something else. Okay. We also offer late risers and we also offer independent tours. Now, with our independent tours, we'll give you a map, we'll give you suggestions as to what you want to see, but we'll also give you the time that you need to be back at the ship. Because if you're not, you will be Ubering it to the next port. We have a fitness coordinator on every single one of our ships. Okay, uh, We do yoga, tai chi, aerobics on this beautiful sun deck on gorgeous days. When the days are kind of cloudy, we'll go down to our lounge area, move all the furniture, and that's where we do it. But all of our ships have a fitness center, and our fitness coordinators will have fitness classes. Or you could just use the fitness classes on your own. I mean, fitness centers on your own um, because they're open 24 seven with your cabin key. And I love talking about our food, okay? It is fresh, it's locally sourced and everything is made on board, okay? Except for our ice creams. And we do get our ice creams um, from a Belgian dairy, okay? Mary Margaret, I think we have to move the presentation to after lunch because we just have to stop doing this before lunch. Uh, I know, I know, so I know. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> getting hungry, so. <laughs> I happen to agree with you on that. I was looking at that going, hmm, looking at the top, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, our, our breakfast and our lunch are, used to be uh, on a buffet. Well, they're no longer on a buffet. Uh, they're what we are, we have menus on the table, which we always did have, but the menus on the table, but we now have action stations. So for breakfast, for an example, one morning you might have a choice between uh, a British breakfast. You might have a choice between a Spanish breakfast. You might have a choice between, you know, um, pancakes and waffles besides an eggs, a, eggs made to order always, right? But you will always have the choice of having a sparkling wine. So we do, we've not ever stopped our sparkling wine. So you could have mimosas or you could have just a glass of sparkling wine or you could just have regular juice if you like, whatever. Um, we also have for lunch, we'll have the action stations of maybe a, an Italian. We might have a uh, Chinese. We might have a German, whatever it happens to be um, on, a, on a different changes during the course of, the, of your cruise. But again, menus on the table. In our lounge area, we'll be serving um, burgers and brats, right? And for dinner, it's always been um, menu driven. And in Portugal, we have El Fresco dining on the sun deck, all right? We don't have our chef's table, but we have El Fresco dining. And with the dinner, we also have, you know, three, three items on the menu. But if you don't like what's on the menu, we always have a filet, salmon, and chicken breast with our Caesar salad and French fries. And I might suggest that you order our French fries at any meal because they are delicious, okay? Um, we also will have a Shen dinner one evening. Shen is an association that is a, it's a food association actually. It was founded back in the 
12th century in Europe was extremely popular then. Laid dormant for a few hundred years, but then was brought back in the 50s. And it's quite popular now, not only in Europe, but also in the United States. And Rudy was inducted into Shem back in 2010. And he would like you to experience one, one meal dinner as a Shem. And if you have a dietary need, just let any of your advisors at Market Square know the only thing that we cannot do is kosher because our kitchen is not kosher. I'll talk a little bit about our chef's table because uh, if you're choosing not to do Portugal, but any of our other journeys, we do have chef's tables on every single one of our ships except for the Doro because it is El Fresco dining, right? That's the alternative. You could have the dining, the dining room or you could do El Fresco dining on our sun deck, okay? Now, our chef's tables are, there's no upcharge. It's five courses, wine paired. And what I neglected to tell you is that for lunch and for dinner, we offer unlimited free-flowing beer, wine, and soda. The regional wines, and where what a better place to have a regional wine is in Portugal, right? Um, you have that you can have a red or a white or both. It doesn't matter. And I always tell my husband, you know, I only have one glass of wine at dinner because they just keep filling it, and it's very true. Please don't hesitate to take that glass of wine or beer after dinner. You know, when it's full, take it to the lounge for our nightly entertainment or take it back to your, to your stateroom or take it up to the sun deck. It doesn't matter. We don't stop you at the door. Okay. But this on our chef's table, it's five courses, wine paired. And it's, you know, it, all you have to do is go up to the front desk and say, I'd like to have dinner there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever it happens to be. All of our ships in Europe have received the Green Award, and we're very proud of that. Uh, you know, when Rudy has designed our ships, he's always designed them with, what are we leaving our, what kind of carbon footprint for our future generations, okay? Fuel efficiency is number one, okay? So we spend more money on our bandwidth than we do on fuel to keep you connected because every single one of our ships is Wi-Fi. And where do we go? We're gonna travel the Douro, right? And so we have two beautiful ships there. They're smaller ships and I'll talk about that. We do five itineraries in France, um, which are, they start on a Thursday, they end on a Thursday. So these are very perfect itineraries for you to do longer stays, do a back-to-back -back in France, do the north of France, the south of France, okay? We do all the rivers of Europe except for the Po, in Italy and the Elba in Germany because the water levels are just too unpredictable. And it would not be fair to you, okay? 2009, we did start uh, Vietnam and Cambodia on the main Kong, and we have a beautiful uh, Amadara, 124 passengers. And in 2019, um, we started Thailand as a pre or a post for you. 2013, we started our Africa program. And I wanna tell you, if you have Africa on your bucket list, please talk to your Market Square advisor to show you our program. It's so unique. It's a land, a cruise, it's a safari. So you start in Cape Town. From Cape Town, we fly you to Botswana. You will board the beautiful Zimbizi Queen, 14 suites, 28 passengers. We'll sail the so Chobi for four nights. Then we take you to um, Falls, sorry, um, for two nights. And then you've decided you are either doing East Africa, Tanzania for your safari, or South Africa, Kruger National Park for your safari, or you could do Robus Rail, which is kind of a little bit of a safari because you will see animals along the way and we do stop. But that takes you into Johannesburg. Okay? We also offer Awanda as a post where you can see the gorillas and the golden monkeys. Yes. Very, very high on my bucket list is the oh, Very yes. high. Yes, and it will, it, Africa will change your life. It is a definite destination that is quite, it's, it's, it's exquisite. Uh, the animals, the people, I mean, it's a, really. I, I would go back in a heartbeat, but when I go back, I would love to do the gorillas. 
because I remember Christine talking about her and Rudy did this and um, talked about the gorillas and how moving it was and how just spectacular to see these creatures. So yeah, they, uh, truly, I think the people who go there really, they almost yeah. speak about the gorillas in hushed, sort of hushed tones. So yeah. it's a very cool life-changing experience. Yes. But we are also starting Egypt in September of this year with a brand new ship, the Amadelia, 72 passengers. Okay. We do offer a pre uh, trip if you so desire to do that as to Jordan or to Dubai. And currently, we haven't heard that it's been discontinued since we're starting in September, but we also are post in Israel. So, again, I don't know, but we do a beautiful trip on the, uh, on the Nile, and we do also give you the opportunity to pre book Abba Simba if you so desire. So, let's get started. Our ships in on the Doro are much different than our ships in Europe. Okay, um, they're French balcony, right? They're not the full balcony with the twin balcony, but they're small. They're 102 passengers. As I mentioned, we don't have a, sh a chef's table. We have El Fresco dining. It has a beautiful swimming pool with a um, which you will use in, in Portugal because of the weather. It is warmer. Okay. Um, and it has, again, it has the lounge, it has the dining area, and the cabin sizes are a little bit different than they are in Europe. We have a suite that's 325, 323 square feet. Okay. Um, it also has the, the balcony of 215, 215 square feet of cabin space. And so it's not the twin balcony as we have in where it's a French as well as a balcony, uh, a veranda. It's all it's, it's, it's just a balcony type cabin. But it does have all the amenities of what we have in Europe. So it does have the app, it has the flat screen TVs, it has the internet, right? Wi Fi completely. So you could be sitting anywhere on our ships and be connected to the the outside world and it's 24 seven and it's complimentary. Okay. Complimentary um, water um, as much as you would like. Again, lots of places to plug in as far as USB, right? And lots of storage as well. And then we do also have the fixed window at 161 square feet. Again, the amenities are the same no matter what size cabin. So we do offer two different itineraries in Portugal. We have the enticing Douro, which is a Porto to Porto, right? And then we also offer the flavors, which goes from, and they both can do a pre uh, Lisbon, okay? Or this one offers you Madrid. And we do visit a little bit, a couple of other different spots, um, a little bit more Spain, right? On the flavors, okay? So, Again, two different, two different types of itineraries. But again, as you could see, we're still visiting some of the same beautiful, beautiful places. Okay. So we offer a pre-extension to Lisbon. And I my um, I had an, an, a niece who studied in uh, Spain and Portugal, and she said Lisbon is absolutely beautiful. I have not been to Portugal or Spain. That's one of the two countries I have not been to. So I apologize, but um, I'll show you some wonderful, beautiful pictures. Let me tell you. And um, Lisbon, I, I have been to Lisbon and it is a, just a beautiful, it's a beautiful city, um, quite charming. It reminds me a lot of San Francisco. It has yeah. very, as you can see here, it has a lot of hills. Yeah. Um, it has a bridge that kind of is a mirror image of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it even has fuel this, cars. Oh, I, that, um, some, I thought I had the picture of that, that bridge, but I guess I don't. But it's very colorful. And it that's a, but, it's exactly and what my niece said. Nowhere near the fog that San Francisco has. <laughs> yes, but that's exactly what my niece said. It reminded her of San Francisco. And that's where she's from. So, yes. So we will take you on to Sintra, the Royal Palace which is the most peculiar building I think you'll ever see. I mean, this photo almost doesn't do it justice. It's like a, 
fantasy wedding cake castle really? perched on the top of a hill and and the the story of kind of how it came to build there is how it came to be built there is quite fascinating and then of course we start our journey in porto um i mean the city is so colorful um I just I love what looking at pictures of this particular city because it's just you know the old and and then you wonder how how they the narrowness of the the homes now uh, Ted have you been to Porto I have yes oh. yes it, it, it's it's it, it, it is quite a beautiful city I think UNESCO designated it like the European city of culture um, a couple of years ago. But it all kind of tumbles down to the riverfront, and so it, it's a very yeah. maritime feeling city. It is, it's, as you can see here. It, it's and it's uh, the, the bridges are absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, Especially at but, night, the, the stroll uh, along the river in the evening is just stunning. And the Doro River is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, actually. Uh, so again, it's the city of bridges. Again, reminds me a little bit of San Francisco because San Francisco does have the bridge that you drive over and above. But, um, but this is also the rail. Yeah, it's got the, the city, the tram, the little city tram goes on the top, but you can walk across the bottom. And um, yeah. this, this one, when it's lighted up at night, it reminds me of the aerial lift bridge up in Duluth a little bit. It's that same kind of iron structure, but just, just beautiful. Ah. And again, Porto. And this is where we will take off. It's a lot of day sailing, okay? A lot of day sailing. You know, I need to move this down. How do I do that? So I can know where we are at and know where we're at. I'm going to move this. I can't. Okay. Move it down here. I guess it's only going to go that far. Um, so there's a lot of day cruising uh, on the Doral River. And again, it's you please remember with the Doral River, it is not necessarily like if you if you've done the door if you've done the Danube and you've done the Rhine or even in France any of the rivers in France you can't just get off the ship and go to the city we have to take you there via bus so it is a little different than the river cruising that you would experience on the the Danube and the Rhine except for Porto of course so <laughs> talking about um, Porto and Portugal is known for its port wine and you will taste port wine but it's also known for its beautiful reds and white wines as well and you will have the opportunity of doing many wine tastings if you so desire um, and you'll do some port tasting and I'll show you some, the beautiful colors of the port which is of course what Portugal is known for. You'll visit the vineyards um, and private homes, the quintas, as they call them. And the, the, uh, the verte, which is a beautiful, very lovely white wine. And I'm going to show you this. See that bottle of wine? You could actually probably get that at um, Total Wine. Oh. You can. Uh, A-V-E-L-E-D-A. -E -E it's a Portuguese white wine. It's delicious. And you know, um, Portugal, Portugal is one of the warmest countries in Europe. You know, you're quite a ways south. And so uh -huh. those really light, refreshing, kind of citrusy, fruity wines like that Vina Verde are quite popular in Portugal. And you know, they're just a nice, nice addition to your lunch on a hot day. And you will have dinner at this vineyard where they hmm, actually nice. uh, process this. And, and, and put it all together. I mean, it's just a big, this vineyard and you'll be able to talk to the owners and then the family actually works the dinner. It's, it's amazing. It's just, uh, it's such a beautiful experience. And I say that not from experience, but from a very dear friend of mine and, uh, and two friends of ours who he was actually our best man at our wedding. Uh, celebrated their 40th anniversary on our ship and they said it was just the most ama amazing thing that they that they experienced as far as uh, visiting these beautiful um, quintas having wine 
uh, having dinner, having lunch, and the foods, of course. And they're, they're known for the codfish. And this is a whole dish that they put together with um, the cod and the potatoes and, of course, olives. <laughs> it's actually much better than it looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You know, Portugal is a very maritime country. I mean, I don't, I don't know how wide it is, but it's not, n nothing is very far from the sea. So you have a lot of opportunities to enjoy fresh, um, fresh seafood prepared in very unique and quite historic ways. I mean, some of these recipes, they've been making them for thousands of years. And if you're interested in the recipe, all you have to do is ask Ted and Ted can go on to uh, uh, our, our, our culinary site and he can send you the recipe. And of course, the pastries. So those are like a like a flan kind of a thing. Thank um, you. Yes. And they're they're the the name is something. So what is it? Pastry de nata, and nata is Easter. So they're kind of a sign of um, spring in Portugal ah. when the pastries are served. They're they're kind of the traditional Easter dish, but they're available all year. But they're like a you know, sweet custard flan um, in a little mini, little mini cup, but they're really good. Yes, you're right, Ted. We hard, have to hard to eat these. just one. Uh huh. We have to schedule these uh, after lunch. We're going to change that. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> um, and they're known for the cork, as far as they, you know, as far as in, in, well, of course, they do all this wine. They have cork, right? No. Yep. <laughs> and saffron. This is where you, you know, actually you are going to bring home saffron because in this country is extremely expensive. Absolutely, it's extremely expensive. But this, what their uh, Portugal is known for is the saffron. And it comes in a little, little jar, <laughs> little jar. A <laughs> little bit goes a long way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Very much so. But you just, you just see the colors. And I mean, even the spices oh. are colors. Everything yeah. in Portugal is so colorful it feels like spring all year round yes so the doro valley look at this beautiful valley i mean this is what you're going to see as you're cruising during the day okay this is the the, the vineyards i mean you're going to see lots and lots of vineyards uh, and you know the the doro river was was really very 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 narrow and it wasn't until you know the 20th century that it was widened, and you will actually go through 33 locks on the Doro. So, and we go to Rios, Ontario Rios, another, and lots of bridges. But as you can see there, I think the bridges are higher here than than they are on the Danube and the Rhine. So we don't have to have the ship that has the retractable um, uh, wheelhouse. And of course, you got, again, the port, you've got the vineyards. Uh, and I'm trying to remember, I believe that we will also have a, um, a tour. You could do a hike, you could do a walking tour once we, you know, get to the place, but look at the vineyards that you will see, and the beauty. And of course you do the bolus tasting. And this is, um, bolus is a, a, a meat dish that they make, from what I understand, uh, and quite delicious. And you could climb these stairs if you'd like or optional, not. optional, right? optional, optional, optional. Yes, optional. Yep. And of course, you've got this is the um, the ultimate climax of of the um, the holy staircase. This is the and one thing before you, before you go to the next slide, if you see that kind of bluish mosaic oh, underneath <laughs> the church, you have a everywhere in Portugal. You see these beautiful handmade or hand painted porcelain tiles like on the outside of all the buildings and it's yeah. very traditional Portuguese um, art form or, or, or craft form. Many of them are um, religious and really you, you just walk down the street in Lisbon and all of a sudden you see this incredible mural in front of you but sometimes you know they're they're sort of public art like this other times they're just kind of 
almost random home decor. And so it's really a cool thing to see. Now, see, this is where you would start. And this is where you will end if you walk the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> uh, yes. And then, of course, there's the Matus Palace. And I don't know if you ever remember the it was also a vineyard. It was a wine at one time, the Matus Wines. Mm. Um, yes. I remember the bottle as I was uh, growing up. The bottle was kind of oval, oval shape. Ah, okay. And the Ata. I mean, look at those vineyards. That's it. I mean, amazing the countryside. And we yeah. will be there. Um, and you will actually have, again, look at the colorful. This is the train station that they have. Um, the tiles. And they tell stories. And this is actually, um, um, uh, oh dear, um, almonds. This is where almonds, um, 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 da, 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 almond, yes. Those are, they, they're white. And then, they're, but this is where we will find a lot of the almond. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm stuttering because I'm trying to remember if it was almonds, it was a, it's a nut. And I'm, I apologize. I think it's, I think it's almonds, yeah. Yes, I mean. it's almonds. And it grows profusely in here. And so again, you will have lunch in another vineyard. And again, you could do a hike, you could do a walking tour. And of course you'll have lunch and you'll be served beautiful wines. And you can see in those pictures too, how incredibly steep the valley yeah. the river is located. And so, as Mary Margaret said, the villages are sometimes over the top of the hill, um, yep. you know, beyond the beyond the bluff, sort of different than, they are. than the Rhine or the Danube. <laughs> they are, absolutely. <laughs> Just, there's no space, there's no room for them. Right. And then we, on the flavors, we, we, we do touch Spain, right? So you're in the Vega Tehran in Spain. And beautiful cathedral. And, you know, I'll say one of the big differences between Portugal and Spain, and, you know, I think if you've been to Europe a few times, sometimes churches can blur together a little bit, but, um, you know, the Spanish have elevated the cathedral to a level that I don't think any other country in Europe can match. And so mm -hmm. the contrast between kind of the more simple Portuguese churches and cathedrals and these just incredible, elaborate Gothic cathedrals in Spain like this, you, you really do realize you're in a different country. Uh, now I have added this to my, I've, it's always been on my bucket list, but <laughs> yeah. I, I just want it. Uh, and again, you can see the cathedral over here, it's the same. This is where with the, um, the flavors, you will do, disembark, right? And you will have the, the, the option of doing a um, post, Madrid, all right, uh, and Toledo. But if you were doing the Porto to Porto, it would be just a round trip. Um, so you so embark turn, in Porto. Boat turns around and goes back to Porto. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we've, isn't this absolutely gorgeous the, in Salamanca? The other outdoor, one of the things that, that you notice in Spain and Portugal, even in, in, in many parts of the of the Europe, is that the outdoor cafes. I mean, I, I am, the one of the things that has happened with COVID is, and I think one of the good things is that we, in this country, we have gotten more into the outdoor cafe, which is so nice. But of course, the climate here lends itself much better to outdoor dining oh, than Minnesota. Year round, <laughs> yeah, year round, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you, yeah, you see these big <laughs> plazas in the city that are just full of cafes that are really open year round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I should preface that. Yes, we do have to. We we have a limited window of opportunity, you know. <laughs> so yes, and then we visit Madrid, and of course the beautiful. The architect. I always, no matter what city, town, village I am in, when I'm traveling, 
uh, outside of the United States is I look at the architecture and I say, oh my goodness, how did they do that? You know, the intricacy, they, they built it. I mean, even looking at Egypt and the pyramids, my God. Um, but it's just magnificent just to stand there and look at the beauty of the architecture. You know, we sort of don't think about it, but there was a time that Spain was sort of the center of the world. Oh, right. It was. The, when, you know, Spain controlled most of Latin America and big chunks of Asia and some possessions yes. in Africa. So Spain has been a really, really wealthy country. And so Absolutely. that is certainly reflected in some of the architecture and the, um, you know, those churches from the Middle Ages, that was when Spanish influence was kind of at its peak. Absolutely. And look at Christopher Columbus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we visit uh, Toledo. And Quite a contrast from Madrid, sort of a more, yes. sort of a more rugged, sort of almost like an outpost. Yeah, it's a big city now, but at the time, back in the day, it wasn't. <laughs> and then we say farewell. Unless you wish to go from Madrid, you could do Lake Como, and then join us on the Rhine, because that's where you would fly into if you're doing the. Um, uh, Rhine castles in Swiss Alps, or even anything that and this goes from Basel to Amsterdam. You fly from Madrid. And you can hop over to Barcelona for a few days and hop up yeah, to the um, River in southern France and catch the cruise there too. There's so many things that once you're there. It's, you know, it's... Now, if you're a solo traveler, we are offering until May 31st, which is only a couple weeks away, 25%. Um, so it's 125% on any balcony cabin. So we normally have it on our category D and E, which is what I call our swan level, the fixed window. But now we're also offering this on our balcony, but it's a limited time. And as I mentioned, back to backs, well, we, I, there are so many variations that you can do as far as doing a back-to-back -back with us that we actually have an app that our reservation that our reservation um the reservation um sorry about that um, um that our reservationists have in their in their system that is over 17,000 different combinations that we could put together with all of our cruises that you could do a back-to-back. -back. And what we've done with this is we give you a 10% savings on your second cruise. And you will get your past passenger savings, which is $100 per person, right? And any other promotions. And it doesn't have to be a total back-to-back. -back. You know, one day you're off the ship and you're back on the other. If you wanna take a couple of weeks and tour and you know, take advantage of Ted's knowledge of traveling throughout Europe, um, and then pick up a ship in um, on the Danube or pick up a, a ship in, in Porto or whatever, um, it still holds. So it doesn't have to be totally one, one right after the other. You can enjoy being in Europe, right? Well, and I, I think that's such a good point, Mary Margaret, because you know we didn't, we didn't really dwell on it in this presentation, but one of the big conveniences of a river cruise is you don't have to pack and unpack every right. night. And yet yes. you get to see so many different places. You know, the, the Douro isn't very long, but the Rhine or the Danube is quite a long trip. And so you really, instead of popping around from place to place and futzing with trains and wasting time, um, right. hop on a river cruise, spend a few days on land and hop on another one. And you can really do kind of that grand tour of Europe that's, that's on everyone's bucket list. Yes, yeah. And since, you know, last year we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Um, you actually take advantage. Yes. Um, this, off, this offer is scheduled to expire December 31st of this year, but I think they're going to ex extend it because it's so popular. And we do have 2023 open. So if you've already got plans for 22, think about 23. And we are offering a 5% savings, all right? 
on that. And that's available until June 30th of this year. And, and Mary and Margaret, top, let's, let's be kind of clear with folks about why 2023 is available for sale. And, and you know, normally it wouldn't be open this early. No. But um, no. a little bird told me that river cruising in 2022 is off the charts popular. And it so, is. Uh, um, yeah. The, the 2023 is available for folks who can't find what they're looking for in 2022. That's right. Um, because, you know, unfortunately, you know, we haven't been able to sail when we normally start in March. We're now already, already almost to June. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we're offering 23. And I'm sure that 24 will be available towards, you know, like the fall of this year. Yeah. So plan ahead. Absolutely. And we do have some new itineraries to offer you and new pre and posts for 2023. One would be the celebration of classical music. It's a seven night journey um, you know, from mm. Budapest to Vienna or reverse. And then we also are doing the Majestic Capital, which uh, is a five night journey. And you will touch base with you know, Budapest, Vaslava, which is the coronation city of, of Europe, um, Vienna, right? So Salzburg. You know? So again, the, the majestic capitals. But the land packages that we're doing is Krakow and Salzburg. And with Krakow, any you can actually, you know, with with um, uh, Krakow, you can do uh, anything with uh, Budapest. You know, Krakow is about eight hours on a bus. Uh, to Budapest or vice versa, but it's well worth it. We stop, we see uh, you know, uh, various different highlights and you know, the Krakow is you not only get into Schindler's factory, but you have a couple, you have a free day, but we also do the concentration camp. But if you're a um, Christmas market junkie, we are doing for the first time the, our South Danube. So it's the gems of Southeast Europe. Christmas in the winter markets, which is, you know, this Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, those countries we've never touched on, but in 23, we are for Christmas markets. And in 23, we're actually, for you Christmas market junkies, doing two weekers. Oh, so nice. you, yes. So you could start in Vilsoven and go to Giru or start in Jiru and go to Lissolven if you'd like. So again, you're seeing all these beautiful countries and these beautiful Christmas markets. And we do have a Seven Rivers. So if you've missed out on your world cruise and or you want to see Europe, you really want to see Europe. In 2023, we are offering 45 nights, 14 countries, seven rivers in the spring and it is april 20th embarkation and june 4th okay and we do offer if you want to start in paris two nights in paris and we also offer at the end as we end in giru um you could do transylvania or you could do Istanbul. But look at these, I mean, you are on these most beautiful, beautiful rivers and all these countries that you will visit. And you're on the Abba Christina. Safely take Europe off the list if you finished, if you did this cruise. Oh, I think yes. you would have seen almost everything there is to see on the continent. Yeah, I mean, and, and special tours. So you say, well, I've already done the Danube. Why would I want to do this again? Well, because we, all the tours are different. They're absolutely special tours and you're spending, you know, you're starting on the Ama Christina on the Rhone. You, we transfer you to the Ama Certo and then the Ama Magna for two weeks. But it's everything's included. You will have one cruise manager. So you're not going to be changing cruise managers all, you know, through these seven rivers. Uh, all your gratuities on board and on your tours are included. Okay? All your transfers, all your luggage transfers, et cetera, services. Are included. You've got complimentary laundry, so you don't have to pack 10 suitcases, okay? And again, we've got exclusive tours for you. 
I highly recommend if you're thinking about, you know, you've got, you've got the time to do this, do it. It's amazing. And because you attended today, you book any new Ama Waterways cruise for 21, 22, and 23 by June 1st with your Market Square Travel Advisor, Ted, you know, <laughs> you will receive a $100 uh, per person discount addition. I mean, I will personally put that on, all right? Um, and I know that Ted has some tours, right? You do the, um, you're doing the uh, Captivating Rhine, yes? We do, yes. Yeah. So coming up in um, May of next year, we have a departure that I'm gonna be hosted. It's along the Rhine River, um, late May, early June. And we leave from Amsterdam and we'll go down to Basel in Switzerland and then end with a couple days in Switzerland. And the real highlight of that cruise is a chance to visit the Floriad Flower Expo. And the Floriad is a once in a decade, um, kind of the world's largest flower show. So it's everything from floral displays to kind of authentic Dutch treats and Dutch culture. And you'll have a chance to spend um, a full afternoon exploring the Floriad as well as discovering Amsterdam. So when I do yeah. the follow-up with you from this presentation, I'll include some information on that. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe Mary Margaret, a couple of questions that have kind of come up about the Duro. Um, sure. What's the travel season? What is the time that the ships operate and when is a uh, harvest time in Portugal for the grapes? <laughs> well, um, we, we travel the end of March to the beginning of November on the Doral. Uh, we don't we don't travel into you know the Christmas market mar uh, winter market season at all on the Doro. Uh, I would I would have to agree that the harvest season is the same as it is in California and with our vineyards. It's going to be the fall. So, okay. Okay. And so spring spring will be a little bit cooler temperature yes. wise. Yes. Um, summer spring in this cool. region can be very hot. hot. It can be. So if you're That's a, why a lot of people spend a lot of time in the swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're a if you're not a fan of the heat, definitely earlier in the season or later in the season yes. is um, yes. worth worth thinking about. Um, Absolutely. You know, we talked a little bit about some of the pre and the post options, and so one of the things I think we we kind of covered quickly was the fact that Ama Waterways has a cruise manager who is dedicated to your sailing. And their job is to kind of make all the arrangements for tours and things like that, and, and just make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, but they actually join you at your hotel on the first night of the pre-cruise land package. And they're with you through the entire duration, which is really nice. They're, they're great people. They're super, super knowledgeable about the destination. You know, Most of them, I assume, are probably Portuguese on these. Yes, we have some more. Yes. Mm -hmm. so they, they, they know all the places to go and all the places to see, but they just really make for a very, very smooth, stress-free experience. Yes. You know, not having to futz with worrying about how to get your luggage from A to B and, and all those things. That's all kind of taken care of for yes. you with this. Now, the only thing I want to stress with the Doro is, and I think I mentioned it in the very beginning, it's not like it is on the Rhine or the Danube or in France. You cannot just step off the ship and be in the city, town, or village, except when you're on Porto, all right? Because we have to take you there. It is a, it is more busing than what you would might be used to if you were to have done the Rhine, the Danube, or any, uh, any of the rivers of France. But certainly the, the end result is oh, worth it. And like, the, like yes. is worth it. Yeah, I had a chance to cruise on the Columbia River in Oregon and Washington, and very similar. The wineries are a little ways away, and so you have a little bit of a ride to get there. But, you know, after a wine tasting, gives you a chance to take a little nap before you get back to the ship <laughs> and hop back onto the, um, the pool. Um, I don't see too many other questions in the box. Kathy is asking about um, putting together a group for the Duro, and that's something I'll certainly take a look at, um, yes. I think Mary Margaret mentioned the small size of these ships. And that, that means that small size of ship, big travel year, up and coming destination, that the Duro is a very, very popular um, 
probably out of all the river cruises, the one that you want to book and plan the earliest. Early. I would Early. Say. Yes. So, you know, 2022, you're thinking about it now, 2023, now is not a bad time to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you were looking to do a group on the Doro, definitely 23. Yep. I would not hesitate. So let's see if we can both remember. We have another um, another session coming up in June. And I think I wrote it down on my notes. So June 22nd, Second. which is a Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. before lunch. So bring your appetites. <laughs> and we're going to go to France in June. Yep. And um, we're going to go on the Seine River, which I think is a really yes. different, different and unique, um, different yes. and unique river cruise because you start in Paris, and so you have a chance to really discover that magical city. Um, you go through some really beautiful parts of France, and then you also have a chance to go see the Normandy D-Day landing beaches. So it's it's for for being a relatively short river. There's a lot packed into that particular cruise. A, so, a lot. And we yeah. do offer, and I'll talk about, um, we do offer two itineraries like we do in Portugal, you know, the impressions of the Seine, which is more artsy. And we offer the Paris and Normandy, which is more history. Yep. But in, in yep. all cases, you will get both. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is It is really a, I, I had the chance to go there first when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> and and the, Nor the Normandy beaches are just, just an incredible experience that I think everybody yes. should should have, but yeah, the, yeah. the, the castles and uh, Monet painted along the way on the, uh, the Seine. So there's some really cool things to see. But since we were talking about Portugal today, um, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll wrap up with Portugal. And if you have questions, um, you can feel free to reply to the email you got that had the confirmation for this. Otherwise, I will follow up with everybody in the next couple of days with a little bit more information on Portugal. Um, about that cruise that I'm hosting on the Rhine. And you'll okay. certainly receive the invitation to our next session. And who knows, maybe by the time we get together in June, we'll we'll know when the definitive restart. Oh, is. yes, I hope Let's so. Hope. Yes, yeah. let's hope, yes. Yeah. Well, you all, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Ted, so much. I, I, love, I love doing these with you because you are such a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I want you all to have a beautiful, Memorial Day weekend, which is in two weeks. My goodness. It is, I know, hard to believe. Ah, yes. And maybe maybe next year we can celebrate Memorial Day in Europe. Maybe. That'd Who be knows? Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very cool. much. We'll see you. Thank you. We'll see you back in a month. And thanks everybody for joining us. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.